I've been to juvenile detention 14 times. I went to two different residential treatments as a kid. I've been to jail five times. I've been to two, or been to a halfway house two different times. I uh, went to two different prisons. Uh, my charges are two burglary third degrees, two escapes, and one operating a vehicle without owner's consent. So uh, today's going to be just a little bit different of a video. Maybe a lot different. I don't think a little bit works there, but six years ago, maybe seven, I uh, sent myself to prison. And I stayed there for probably 16 months in a medium security prison before I was able to go home. So today we're going to talk about, I think, my actual prison experience. We're going to put in another video but today I just kind of want to talk about like what got me there and all the things yeah that basically led up to me eventually going to prison all right so uh, growing up good kid like I'd help my mom listen all that stuff until about the age of 13 14 and then I started hanging out with the wrong people started smoking cigarettes smoking weed skipping school just being obnoxious and this is probably sooner than that actually I was probably like 11 12 when this stuff started happening so yeah that kind of started my downward spiral uh, but yeah we used to steal my grandma's car quite a bit there was probably a good probably seven times that we did it and a couple of the times my grandma found out about it and she told us that next time we do it she's gonna call the cops and yeah we didn't take her seriously so the next time we did it I'm out driving around I drop off all my friends I'm getting ready to come home for the night and uh, bring home the car or whatever and as I'm pulling up on the corner or whatever my house on the corner so I'm just sitting there at the intersection I see uh, two cop cars in the driveway my grandma in the doorway talking to him and it's almost like right when I pull up I'm the only car it's like two o'clock in the morning so they look right at me to see who it is and then they notice and I see my grandma shut the door and kind of look out the window at me and the cop kind of start to hustle to his car so I uh, decide to take off uh, casually and I don't take off casually. I squeal the tires and yeah, just so awkward and so scary. But I drive for about a half block. They light me up and pull me over. And I ended up going to juvenile detention for the night and getting charged with operating a vehicle without owner's consent. Um, I want to say I got put on a type of probation. They have two types of probation. One's supervised probation to where they're pretty much down your throat you check in with them like on a regular basis you have to drop uas all that and they have unsupervised probation which basically just means if you mess up at all or catch a charge while you're on supervised probation or on supervised probation then you get put on that one so it's like yeah it's just a lot easier you don't have to meet with them every week i think you meet with them once in the beginning once at the end you don't have to drop uas so i was on that at first and I ended up skipping school smoking weed like just getting into trouble more and more trouble so they ended up revoking that probation and putting me on supervised probation and that is really kind of what started just the I don't know probably a good 10 years of just being incarcerated on and off but uh yeah so they put me on supervised probation for that charge and I started to mess up more and more again smoking weed skipping school doing all that same stuff I was doing before uh, their punishment usually for me was to put out a warrant for my arrest and then take me to juvenile detention uh, 90 I don't think there was ever one single time that they put a warrant out for my arrest that I willingly went and turned myself in like I've literally had so many different encounters of cops like knocking pounding on my door like I have probably anxiety to this day all the different times that I've been on the run and have cops like knocking at the door and like hiding out from them slipping out the back door slipping out the back window like just fucking taking off through my neighborhood from <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, there was a lot of times I got caught to 14 times total that I actually went to juvenile detention. Um, I knew like all the staff members' names, like like I felt like I was like friends with them. Like when I went there, like I had like people that I knew there and people that were just like, oh Chris, you did it again, you little bastard. But yeah, I uh, 
kept going back back and forth juvenile detention kept smoking weed kept skipping school um they put me in two after school programs like boot camp programs to where like let's say i don't walk fast enough somewhere then they basically make you do 25 push-ups every time you mess up you do 25 push-ups and then they have physical training like an intense one hour of physical training to where they just fucking wear you out like i'm talking like 200 burpees like 200 push-ups and like they would punish like we'd get like group punishments like if one person couldn't finish like everyone else would have to do more like i don't know just basically military theme military type boot camp basically after school from like three o'clock till maybe eight nine o'clock or probably not nine it was about eight o'clock at night so yeah one of the longest fucking days for anyone to go to school and then get off and literally have to go to a boot camp until you go to bed that night but yeah i did that for a while um that i did it in middle school this is actually before i was on probation they tried to put me in this and i think at the time i realized okay I did it for a while, like six months, the middle school one, and then came to the realization that I wasn't actually court-ordered to do it, so I could basically just tell them, fuck off, and that's what I did, stopped going to that one, but then they have a high school one, and this is after the time that I got put on probation for stealing my grandma's car, so I was actually court-ordered to do that one two different times, I think. I think I failed it once and went to juvie and then came back out another time and had to do it, but yeah, literally this is like, phase it's called phase it's in cedar rapids if you guys ever hear anything about this program it's literally one of the worst fucking programs ever like they the people that are there are just hateful mean staff members that like just want to like like you can restrain kids there like let's say a kid gets mouthy or some shit the staff members can like take them and just body slam them to the fucking floor if they're having a bad day or whatever dude like just they don't even have to have a reason and they were slamming kids like so many different times that happened and i for one never got fucking slammed because i could I guess stay completely still when they'd get in my face, but yeah, there's kids that would like look away and they'd just fucking grab them, body slam them to the ground, fucking start yelling at them. So this program's terrible. I don't even know if it's still a thing, but how that was even allowed to be a thing that they thought could help kids at all just amazes me. Something uh, I've kind of forgot that I wanted to add about the restraints is that it wasn't just like them body slamming you to the ground and yelling at you and that being the end of it it was similar to how cops restrain and hold down people and if it lasted a lot longer than that too it, and it would be multiple people like literally multiple staff members just sitting on top of like a kid like laying on them one holding their arms one holding their legs just like pinning them down to the ground one on top of them like like, it's shocking, because it's like, today, like, that type of stuff happens, like, you think about, like, George Floyd, a cop, like, on his neck, like, he died. Like, I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if there was kids, multiple kids, who died just from these physical restraints that they were doing. And, and they were doing them every couple days. Some days it was, like, three a day, like, they were just, like, trying to restrain people. But, yeah, that was, like, the process, and it's not a short process, it's like a almost like a 30 45 minute process like none of the other kids are supposed to like look like if you get caught looking you can get in trouble and get restrained so it's like they say that you're like thinking about helping if you're looking or some shit and like take it as a threat but yeah i've seen other kids get restrained just for like trying to watch but yeah it would be like three to five staff members just piled on top of some little hundred maybe 125 pound kid um just holding them down for like 30 45 minutes like i can just remember so many different times a kid screaming in pain like my arm my back and just like breathing weird just sounding fucked up like it just to this day just that that just sticks with me just like how fucked up that was and how they thought that was that was like a good punishment or you know what i mean like i understand if a kid's like got a knife and trying to fucking kill somebody maybe that might be appropriate response or something but these kids 
weren't doing anything wrong. Like, they would, like, let's say they went into a room before they, like, you had to ask for permission to go into a room. Uh, before you entered a room, um, a staff member could get up in your face and start yelling at you. And just like that, hitting you off guard, like, you look away or lose your balance and fall backwards. Like, they'd just take your ass to the ground and then three, four other staff members come pile it on top of you. Just, yeah, it's nuts. But, yeah, I really wanted to explain that a little more just because... Yeah, it's just a really bad thing they used to do, and I'm sure they probably still do it to this day. Okay, so uh, phase obviously didn't work out. I think I tried to do that whole program for over a year, and just, yeah, you could never make those people happy. And, yeah, after that, I think I stopped going to there. Another warrant was put out, and this time, after I got picked up, I think it was like a couple months that I was on the run, just fucking hiding from just wherever, staying at friends' houses, and wherever I could to not get caught, um, I finally ended up getting caught, I don't remember how this time, but, uh, yeah, ended up getting caught, going back to juvie, I stayed there for about a month, and then this time they said they were gonna send me to, they call them residential treatments, RTs, but it's basically just a place you go live at as a kid, um, and luckily, they sent me, uh, to a place called Quakerdale, and this place was nothing like what I expected it to be. It was kind of like a camp. Like you had two different staff members there um, that were like really nice. And I don't know, just yeah, like you weren't getting punished really for shit. Like they'd have stern talkings to you if you like messed up. But you could like go to public school. We went to, I can't even remember the name of the school. But yeah, it was funny, like all these... I don't know, the kids at the school knew that there was this group of kids or whatever um, from Quakerdale, and they had a name for them. They called them uh, the Quaker Flakes, because uh, usually it wasn't kids like me. It wasn't like bad kids like me. It was like kids that maybe had like bad homes and like, I don't know, just didn't, like kids that were waiting for adoption. Like I know there was one kid there named Sam who was waiting to get adopted. Um, I think there was another kid there, his name was Dan. He didn't have any charges, but he was just kind of starting to do like the stuff that I was doing. Um, but yeah, a lot of the people there weren't very bad. Like, I don't know, it was more like a camp than anything. Um, they had, like, a PlayStation there you could play. Like, I played Need for Speed all the time there. They had a basketball court outside. I could just be like, hey, I'm going to go outside and play basketball, and that was fine. Like, going to public school. So I did that program, um, and I actually really liked it. Like, I mean, it's, no matter where you are, it sucks not being able to go home. Like, I was, like, an hour and a half away from home. There was no no visits or anything like that like I was just in there until I was out and then I could go home but uh or my family could come visit me but I couldn't like go home for Christmas or anything like that I don't think but uh yeah that program wasn't too bad I, I kind of fucked off in that program like I was going to public school and having like people buy me cigarettes and yeah smoking them like literally at Quakerdale like I just put a fan in my window and for some reason the staff I d they had to have smelled it like cigarettes are just so strong like my room literally had to have smelled like an ashtray but I'd put this fan on the window and yeah I smoked so many cigarettes I even smoked weed there like I just yeah I was bad there, didn't learn my lesson, um, ended up getting out of there, and I was still on probation, I think I maybe lasted about another month uh, before I ended up smoking weed again, and then dropping a dirty UA, uh, I think another warrant was put out for my arrest, so I went on run again, and then this time, they were like, okay, we're going to send you to an even worse place than the last place you went to, so the place they sent me to was called Clarice. Rinda Academy. It's like, I don't know, south, southern Iowa, but yeah, far away from where I live, and kind of like FaZe and Dart, those two boot camp places I was talking about, except instead of just being there for half the day, you live there, and you're stuck there until you complete the program, and there was like so many kids in there that literally just like, oh man. I can't, there was like some kid named Shaquille who'd been there like two years, like just some, some little kid who was just like funny and obnoxious, like he'd do the dumbest things to get in trouble, 
but yeah, just like people that were like stuck there because you had to complete a program. And yeah, some of these kids just didn't have the tools like that they needed like mentally, I feel like, just to be able to, I don't know, complete this program. And the staff there, I mean, there was some good staff members, but there were some bad staff members too. Like just like the other place, you had people that would go there. Like I want to say people that just got bullied in high school, like people that... I don't know, typically nowadays are like your average cops and just fucking dickhead fucking assholes, but yeah, these uh, staff members uh, just were just like the other place, like they loved restraining kids, loved coming to work in a bad mood, and fucking just, yeah, there was a guy there, his name was Mike, staff member, some old fucking, looked like Jeff Foxworthy, but with like long hair and just talk like a redneck, and obnoxious but he thought he was just so tough just this little brittle old man uh redneck looking asshole just thought he was the toughest dude ever and like we'd go into the gym and he'd always point out like literally every goddamn time we went into the gym he'd point out this crack in the gym floor of where he restrained a kid and put his teeth through the floor or some shit and how we better not talk back to him because he'll that'll be us if we blah 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 and he'd get like this real serious look on his face and we'd have to pretend that we're even slightly scared of this just tiny little redneck dude but yeah just people like that and there was good people i remember there was a staff member named i think missy there it's this girl uh but she was just really nice like you could tell she like these guys would be saying stuff like that and you could almost like see her like rolling her eyes or just like not being impressed and knowing that it's like not something that you should be telling these kids and shit like how and how cool you are for putting a kid's teeth through a fucking gym floor but yeah i was at this place and i uh I can't remember. I, I know I completed the program, and I worked real hard to get my eagle status, and yeah, without going into too much detail, I mean, this place had its ups and downs. Like, I played football there. I, I literally started for the JV team, the varsity team, because we didn't have enough people to play, so I literally started offense, defense for JV and varsity, like, just playing football as much as I possibly could to get away from the program and, like, going to the practices for JV and and for varsity like I felt like that's what helped me complete the program was just staying out of my dorm playing football and shit um, but yeah I did that got all my levels got to they call it eagle status so I did that got up to eagle status and then they give you a survey to do literally the night before you leave they give you a survey to do asking about everything like just your experience what they can do to improve it and all that and i was pretty blunt and honest in it just because it even said on there like they don't they can't hold it against you like it's just something that they uh something that they read later you know what i mean like after you leave like it doesn't affect you at all and my team leader jim he decided to read the letter before i left and he didn't like what i wrote in the letter because uh, I was real blunt and honest. Like, I was like, this, you know, it isn't this place um, that makes kids better. It's just being away from your family. And, like, I, I was like, this place is literally such a shitty place to be at that nobody wants to come back to it. And, like, I, I was real critical of, like, the level system and of the staff members that come in acting like they have a chip on their shoulder and, like, just wanting to restrain kids and all that. And my team leader decided to wake me up by like yelling like i could hear him yelling in my hallway like chris thinks whatever about whatever like literally telling everyone there and like admitting that he read like my letter but he told me he was going to take away all my levels and call my probation officer and tell him that um i thought this program was a joke and i didn't learn anything and how i should stay here and all this shit um and i remember being so fucked up that day like just thinking like they said they weren't going to read it like it said to be honest like like he you know why is he fucking like coming at me like this like he wasn't supposed to read it thinking that i was going to be stuck in there like this is the day i was supposed to leave like fucking terrified like dude what the fuck like i literally got all my levels dude just did this survey and now they're going to take it away and keep me in here and luckily um, i was able to call my probation officer 
and I left her a message like telling her everything like look I did the survey it said that they couldn't use it against me all that shit and yeah she fucking went off on that whole entire place like that she yeah snapped on Jim for one that fucking asshole that did that to me um snapped out on him like called the head people there snapped out on everyone like literally had them change their whole entire process for like when students leave and like that whatever survey that they fill out and shit like that process was completely changed because of just this one encounter with me but yeah dude that was such a fucking shitty day i remember like i mean it was real good once i talked to her and she was on my side but just waking up to thinking you're leaving after being somewhere for a year like completing the program like fuck dude i'm finally out of here and then the day you're supposed to get out because of the exit survey that you wrote or whatever like them trying to fucking just come down on you and like yeah take away all your levels and keep you in there like that shit was just i'll always remember that day dude <laughs> like i'll always remember it even with a bad memory just because yeah it was just so fucked up all right so uh by the time i got out of clorinda i think i was i think i was almost 18 and once I was 18, since it was charges I got when I was a kid, I would just automatically be done with everything. Um, so I think even when I got out, I, th I was... I enrolled at a community college, but I enrolled there um, to be a firefighter, surprisingly. I, I remember thinking about it, and I was like, you know, like most people wake up for their jobs that they hate, you know what I mean? Like, just fucking go in every day miserable. Like, what, I don't know, I just remember thinking, like, waking up and going in to save people every single day, like, has got to be one of the most rewarding jobs that you could possibly ever have. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to do, and, yeah, I started going to college for that, and I think I started smoking weed again. I remember skipping, like, some of my college classes, going out smoking weed, because um, I knew, I think there was, like, a couple weeks left of until I turned 18 so I was like okay like even if they drop on me I'm gonna be good because no matter what I'm like done with everything in two weeks so yeah I don't even think they dropped on me um pretty sure I just got off everything once I turned 18 and that didn't last very long so I kept smoking kept just doing the same old dumb shit that I had been doing um and I decided one night um that I was gonna go steal some money from a place I used to work at um, that sold really good pizza and really good chicken. It's not fried chicken, it's close, but almost. But anyways, that's not important. Um, they kept the deposits there overnight instead of depositing them. So I got the bright idea to go and get the deposit. Um, cause yeah, I kept the door open, like they had a side door and I propped it open before close and then came back that night. So yeah, I know I'm an idiot. I did that and then I ended up getting caught for that. It's kind of, yeah, that's a long story too, how that all happened. But basically, yeah, they knew that I did it and I got charged with, they wanted to charge me with three counts of burglary third degree, but they brought it down to two counts of burglary third degree. Both are felony charges and both have a sentence of five years, so I was facing a potential of ten years, well, fifteen years at first, but yeah, I went down to ten. Um, I think I had about a month to where I was able to just kind of do whatever until my court date, and then on my court date, I got sentenced, not to prison, but I got my 10-year sentence, but it's, yeah, you're on probation, basically. If you can complete probation, you don't have to do your sentence, and I got put on probation. I did the same stuff that I did as a kid. I mean, just getting into trouble. I think I wasn't looking for a job, so that was pissing her off. And, yeah, dropping dirty UAs, so put out a warrant for my arrest. I think I went on a run again for a while. And ended up getting caught and brought back in. And they decided that they were going to send me to a halfway house. And if you guys don't know, a halfway house is like a... Basically, it's like a... Wait, hold on one second. 
Okay, a halfway house, basically like a place you live at that you are able to leave to go work from. Uh, so it's like you're incarcerated, like you have people checking up on you and like fucking coming to your work, making sure you're there, like you gotta like give them your schedule the week before, like all this shit. So it's like, yeah, it's real hard to like mess up I guess in this I mean don't, don't get me wrong a lot of people did and we'd bring in cigarettes and you know all sorts of different shit and getting in trouble K2 was real big at the time I was in there everybody was smoking that shit even me like I got started on that shit and let me just say one thing right now guys that is something that I will never, ever, ever recommend to anyone ever that shit is so bad. Oh my god. I've did so many different drugs and nothing has come close to me ever feeling like, oh fuck, like I'm gonna die as many times as that fucking drug. Like, yeah, don't do K2, guys. That's probably one of the worst drugs you can do out there, I feel like. Like, even worse than fucking, like, I don't know, it's up there with heroin and, like, meth and just, you yeah, know, all them bad ones. So I uh, kind of forgot to go over that first time I went to jail, which would have been uh, right before the halfway house. But uh, yeah, that first time I went to jail, that very first night, and that's always the worst. The first night you go to jail is always the worst, because they put you in the drunk tank. And if you're lucky, you can get there on a weekday and not get a bunch of fucking super drunk-ass people fucking fighting and pissing everywhere, literally like a foot or two away from you at the most. Um... But, yeah, if you get there on a weekday, it's not near as bad, because, yeah, it's just a crowded-ass room with, like, a concrete slab, one toilet that's out in the open. Um, they give you a little scratchy, thin blanket. Like, they really try to make it as un uncomfortable for you as they can, because most people, when they go to jail, they're usually just there that one day, like, or that one overnight until they have court the next day. Um, but, yeah... They try to make it shitty. I've seen people piss on each other. I've seen people fight. Like, I've literally been, like, five feet away from them, like, mace and two people fighting. I've had to clean up mace. Like, it just... Yeah, the drunk tank sucks. It's always where all the, all the shit happens. You get, like, just drunk-ass people that come in just, like screaming you get people that have fucking just fucked up on fucking just all sorts of kinds of drugs dude like if you're lucky they'll put them in their own cell but half the time they just fucking throw them in the drunk tanks that's probably like a fun little fucking just reality tv series for them to watch <laughs> but yeah I've seen some shit in the drunk tank. Uh, one tip I'll give you guys if you go in find that roll of toilet paper and snag that Make sure that toilet paper is your roll of toilet paper. Don't let anybody else have that. Because that's going to be the only fucking pillow that you can have. And then when the guard comes in next time, just tell them you're out of toilet paper and need another roll. Um, so yeah, use that. And then, yeah, that's about all the tips I have for the drunk tank. It's really just like, yeah, there's not much you can do in there to make yourself comfortable. Other than using that toilet paper roll as a pillow. <laughs> so, I think that first time... Or I know that first time I just went to court the next day and then got out right after that. But the second time I went, um, I ended up like having to stay until a bed opened up at the halfway house for me to go to. Um, so that was about two and a half months. But yeah, that's like you go there for a day, go in the drunk tank, and then the next day they send you upstairs. Anyone who has to like stay in jail for more than a day, they go upstairs. And then that's where... It's almost like the big blocks or whatever. Like you have like D block, E block, fucking A, B, C, all them blocks. Um, one block's work release. Another block's like the immigration block. Uh, got your workout room like right in the middle. Like all cable weights, no free weights. And then yeah, all the blocks just kind of surrounded around. And the guard tower like kind of in the middle. Not a tower, just like they're little room that they all chilled at and had the cameras and everything but uh i think the first time i went up i went to d block which was the immigration block for some weird ass reason but i think they just kind of were overpopulated at the time so maybe a good 10 people in there um only spoke spanish like yeah and i'm not gonna lie it was like some of the funniest shit ever like they were just so funny like they constantly had us laughing all the time but yeah when i first went in there um i walked to my 
empty bunk, which is a top bunk. You'll never find a bottom bunk, like unless it's like yeah, nobody in the dorm. But yeah, 99% of the time you're gonna go to a top bunk and you throw your stuff up there. I think I kind of like made my bed a little bit, kind of put away the stuff I had in like the little drawer underneath the bed, and uh, just kind of went and sat up on my bunk, and then like. I don't know, I was just chilling, um, and some big, not even tall, but just fucking big, like, muscular black dude, some shorter black dude, came walking up to me, and he was like, hey man, I know you ain't got no socks, you need some socks, and I think I heard enough, like, just from, like, my friends and TV and all that to not accept things from people right away, like, usually you're gonna end up having to pay something or whatever, and, yeah, I was, right away, I was like, no, man, I'm good, thank you, though, and then he's like, okay, well, yeah, no problem, man, if you need them, just let me know, and then, yeah, that night kind of went by, I think they had TV going, watched TV a little bit, kind of contemplating my life decisions and what the fuck's gonna happen to me, um, and that same dude comes back, and he's like, hey, man, I got some some of these allergy pills. And he's like, they help you sleep. Do you want some? Right away, I'm thinking, like, oh, shit, dude, this dude's trying to drug me up and rape me. <laughs> he's trying to rape me. Oh, no. But, yeah, turns out he wasn't trying to rape me. Uh, his name was CY. It's actually a cool ass fucking dude. Like he was literally just looking out for me that day, but I ended up being locked up with him a few different times in jail and we actually both went to the halfway house together. And yeah, he's somebody I consider was like one of my actual fucking good friends. Like he was crazy, dude. I swear there was one night I think it's the first time I went to jail, the first time I like went upstairs, met him, all this stuff. We had some crazy ass dude. Like just literally they they, they let him onto our block at like 10 o'clock at night, like a really weird ass time, so we had to have been like in like protective custody or isolation or the hold or something like that, but they let this dude on our block, like with his bag and shit, to come fucking chill with us like fucked up on something dude, or just like crazy as fuck but yeah, he came in all weird didn't really say anything, and it was like already night time, so people are kind of like winding down, going to bed and uh, this dude like goes up to the button and starts like screaming like they have a little intercom button you can press and starts fucking screaming like at the staff members and they're not like paying attention like I don't know if they're just not in there or just ignoring them but yeah see why that guy I was telling you about he was trying to sleep on his little bottom bunk and fucking got up and he's like hey man if you don't shut the fuck up like something's gonna happen and dude wouldn't shut up kept fucking screaming acting obnoxious like he walked away from the button see why I fucking walked up to him and just fucking cold clocked his goddamn ass clean the fuck out dude like the dude just fucking collapsed and see why I just went and sat down back in his bed, dude. <laughs> that guy fucking ran over to the button, dude, and just started fucking pressing the shit out of it and screaming fucking nonsense. But they, the guards came in, like, fucking kind of giggling and shit, and just took this dude, took him and left. And didn't usually, like, we were expecting him to come back and, you know, take CY away or some shit. But, yeah, they didn't even give a shit. They were just like, okay, we knew he was crazy. We just wanted one of y'all to whoop his ass or something. But yeah, that shit was crazy. So yeah, after that, I think I was in there for like two and a half months in jail. And then finally I was able to go to the halfway house. And yeah, the halfway house is just weird. It's like this building with a bunch of hallways. And then in each hallway there's like different little, I don't know, rooms with like bunk beds and stuff. Like three to four people a room. Um, everyone has to work there. So like you get like a month to find a job. I think I found one real quick. Started working. Um, started actually doing good there, like I was staying out of trouble, fucking getting through their little level system that they had, and I think I got all the way up to level 6, and was about three weeks away from going home, and I might have smoked K2 at one of my jobs, and somebody driving by on a forklift seeing me and another guy doing it, um, they reported it, and then... Yeah, the center, which is the place I was at, the halfway house, they uh, dropped a UA on me, and I dropped clean for both UAs. Um, they told me that they were going to basically, I, I was let go from that job, um, and then I was told that 
if I don't get a job within two weeks that my level system will like restart at one. Like if I got my levels, I'd be fine, which I, I didn't get like a report or anything. I didn't get in trouble. Um, I just basically lost my job and had to get a new one. But I um, got a new job like less than a week I think I started working at a Italian restaurant and uh, started working there and whatever I think you had to like write in for your level systems uh, to like go up or whatever so I think I had to like write something uh, to see if I still have my levels and I got it back and they said that they were going to take away all my levels despite having like no proof of anything uh, me dropping clean UAs me getting a job like they were like okay we're just going to restart the whole program over so instead of getting out in three weeks you're going to have to stay here and do it all again and it had been like six months since I've been in there so I think about a week of that lasted before I was like okay I'm not doing this all over again like this fucking bullshit um they have no proof of nothing you know what i mean don't get me wrong fucking a dude drove by quickly on a forklift and seen us but i just felt like it was like could have been like some dude at work that just didn't like us or didn't like the halfway house people whatever like they had no proof of nothing there was no cameras um but yeah they decided to restart my levels so i think i checked out to work went on run again that actually lasted a while this time i think i was on run like four or five months and then I got picked up, don't remember where or how exactly, because I got picked up so many different times, but got picked up and then went back to jail, had to wait another two months to go back to the halfway house again. Um, I went back there, and then I feel like my memory is a little hazy the second time around at the halfway house. Like, I remember, I don't remember why I ended up going on run. I think I was there for like three, four months, and maybe it was like from, I think we were smoking K2, that probably affected my judgment, and I think I knew I was going to get in trouble for something, like I, I had like a weekend pass to go home or something, um, like for the first time, hadn't been home in so long, like five, six months, and finally get this pass to go home for like a night on the weekend and they find cigarettes not even in my stuff but just in our room like i had this uh it's like this indian guy his name was chief but yeah everybody called him chiefs and uh he would sell cigarettes like he was like the main cigarette dealer in the whole place like if you needed a cigarette you could come to him with 50 cents and get a cigarette um, but yeah, they raided our room once and found a bunch of cigarettes that he had hidden, um, and like places to where it could have been anyone. So nobody in the room talked and yeah, we all got fucking in trouble and got a report, got all of our weekend passes taken away. I think shortly after they found K2 on chief, uh, like a week later. So yeah, that ended fucking chief being in there he went to prison i think but yeah the second time around it was just like the staff that were there i don't know just the k2 like just everywhere like you'd walk into the bathroom just to take a shower and there'd be fucking three people in the back smoking k2 like hey man you want to hit this like it was just fucking impossible to avoid but yeah i think all that combined losing my levels for something that i didn't even or not my levels but losing that weekend pass for something i didn't even do i was just like okay i'm not doing this shit anymore like i'm just so done and over this went on run and i think that only lasts month or two um i remember how i got picked up i was it's like hiding in the bathroom as they were coming through the door i kind of panicked and i just ran and like literally just hid behind the bathroom door there wasn't very many places to hide but yeah they came in i was real quiet and then they came in the bathroom and the first thing i seen like literally two inches away from my face was a gun like just coming into the bathroom first like so close to my face so right when i seen that i'm just like oh shit i'm right here don't fucking shoot me and yeah they took me to jail and i stayed there for about a month maybe two months and the my probation officer at the time was wanting to send me back to the halfway house like fucking third time they wanted me to go back there and by then i was just like okay i'm really getting uh kind of tired of 
the halfway house. Like, it ain't helping. It's just a trap. Like, so many different people go there and just end up going to prison anyways. And uh, I've been talking to my lawyer and I found out that they were going to pass this law to where they gave you credit each day that you were on probation towards your sentence. So I did the math in my head and I looked at it like once they passed this law for sure, like it was a for sure thing, it was going to into effect, into effect the next couple weeks, all my credit will catch up, my sentence will be served and boom, I'll be out of prison like two weeks later. And I had another guy in there that I was buddies with, his name was Hawkeye, a real cool guy like I was friends with him like yeah we, we had a lot of fun made jail not near as bad um, but yeah I was in there with him and he was in the same boat like he was been on probation for a while if they passed this thing it would have gave him all the credit he needed to where he would have been able to get out um, right then and there so when I went to prison we or when I went to court that day we we both had like, our court dates were the same. Like, literally, when we went into court, we went together. Um, they asked us which one of us wanted to go first. And we both were going to do the same thing. And, like, we both talked about it. And we were like, hey, man, if whoever does it first, because we didn't think they'd ask us. They thought they'd just pick one of us. And we, we just said, you know, whoever does it first, try to do this. If it works, you know, awesome. If it doesn't work, the other person don't do it, obviously. So, yeah, they asked us who wanted to do it first. And me being the dummy that I am like always I don't know I just like helping people and shit like I thought I was a hero by going first but I was like I'll go first and went and did it and I was like okay I want to revoke my own probation because I guess you can do that I talked to my lawyer but I want to revoke my own probation and basically send myself to prison to finish out my sentence and judge kind of looked at me weird like okay so you want to go to prison and I'm just like yep I want to go to prison like whatever fucking I told him even in the court I told him about that thing I was like I know this law is going to pass like uh, the credits your time served I was like I'm going to send myself to prison and then once this passes hopefully like my sentence will be served and I can get out right then um so yeah that's what I thought was going to happen to me but uh yeah I was gonna have to go to prison or whatever they after your court they don't tell you exactly when it's like within a week or two but they don't tell you exactly when because you can like call people and be like hey i'm leaving on this day come break me out or find me on the interstate blah 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 whatever uh so they don't tell you when but i knew it was coming soon so i had my girlfriend put a hundred bucks on my books which is the most that you can have if you put any more than a hundred dollars on your books at least in Iowa they will take that uh, money and garnish you to where you don't get to have money on your books second somebody puts money on your books it goes to your fines and like the state and all that shit so she put a hundred on my books uh, 100 exactly so I wouldn't go over and the day that I'm going to leave that morning I see that I have zero dollars on my books and it was because I had six cents already on my books from before so I was at a hundred dollars and six cents so I would have went to prison with this hundred bucks been able to put it on the phones uh, or to be able to call people you know what I mean you got to put have money on your books you put that on the phones and you can call people um, the commissary stuff that I'd need like I'd probably need like socks and a toothbrush just like the random stuff like that that I was gonna need um, and just comfort stuff like shit just a bag of potato chips for 80 cents that's literally just like the best thing ever just because it reminds you would just not being in a hellhole like jail or prison but yeah that type of stuff but anyways I got a letter saying that I've been garnished because I went over six cents so I went to prison with literally nothing at all I had no way the only thing I could do was write letters to people like I had to write letters and like wait in agony for like literally two weeks like literally one of the darkest fucking times in my life by far like just like not knowing if that law was going to pass like not knowing what was going to happen like not being able to call anyone like talk to anyone like fucking walking around and like no socks or whatever like you couldn't bring your other stuff you had from jail so I was there with like no socks like blisters on my feet just yeah absolutely sad and fucking miserable 
and yeah waiting for that law to pass but turns out that law passed but instead of getting a full day towards your sentence you only got half a day so that meant that I was going to be sitting in prison for the next two years waiting for my time to be served and me to be done so the one thing I just wanted to explain for you in the video the two escapes on my record I didn't actually you know fucking escape from prison or jail or anything like that I got those by not going back to the halfway house um, like I whatever make a pass to like leave go to work or I think you could take like a three hour pass to the store and yeah I just didn't come back so that's where those came from but uh in the next video I'm going to talk a lot about prison kind of what that was like and yeah just go over a lot more stuff and even in this like there's so much I'm leaving out so much stuff happened like in jail one of the third or fourth times uh people fight in the showers I went in the shower to fight some fucking dude some tall ass lanky ass fucking dude thought he was a gangster but not even close but I went into the shower and waited five minutes for this dude to come in there and fight me because he'd just been talking shit fucking yeah and I just had enough of it and dude wouldn't come in there and I come out and he's literally got his toothbrush like sanding it up against the wall like trying to make a shank I guess but while everybody's sitting there clowning on him and laughing at him like oh Abe's gotta make a shank he's a little bitch and just giving him all sorts of shit but just stuff like that like that shit would happen Maybe not that severe, somebody like fighting someone and them trying to make a shank to shank you with, but stuff like that would happen all the time. Just so much stuff, and yeah, I, I feel like if I wanted to make a series out of this, I easily could. All the stuff that's happened, like, yeah, there's just so much, but yeah, I really appreciate it if you guys have uh, watched a video this far. Um, mean a lot to me if you guys could subscribe, and then another thing ask some questions I mean I want one of these videos on this little series of prison and me getting in trouble I want one of those videos to be just kind of answering questions that you guys might have about either my story or just jail prison I mean if you guys are in similar similar I can't say similar similar situations uh, just kind of advice I could give you stuff like that but yeah this took a lot of a lot of work to put all this together a lot of memories uh, just kind of putting a lot of personal information out there so I'd appreciate it if you guys could subscribe and yeah hopefully uh, the next one of these will be coming out soon to where I explain the uh, my time in prison all right guys thanks for watching